Hello and welcome to the weekly Old School q and I hope you're having a wonderful week. Joining me on the sofa are mods Kieran. You alright? Lenny. Hey guys. Bruno. And Yo. on the end there, is this your first appearance? Yes. We have mod Searcher. Hello. Hi. Uh, I'm going to get some of the announcements out of the way first. So the first one being Premier Club to find out all the details is exclamation mark membership. Um, as you'll find out in next, well, Tomorrow's update post, uh, we're actually extending the gold premiership um, for the foreseeable. Uh, it's just been really popular with you guys. Keep, keep getting it. It's our best value membership package at the moment. Uh, we also have a competition going, which was announced, I think, at the end of last year um, to win a Razer phone for playing mobile on, uh, the gaming phone. Uh, for details about that, it's exclamation mark win Razer. That's Razer as in the scooter that bashes your shins in, not the thing you shave with. Um, <laughs> and now I'm going to talk to Mod Searcher about surveys. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I guess yeah, surveys is a very exciting one to begin with. But um, I guess I, I wanted to introduce myself a little bit, um, especially because there was a lot of chatter uh, over the week um, about uh, the new um, new skill kind of. Uh, piece of work that we're looking into in a consultancy but I guess um, I just want to introduce myself a little bit to begin with. Um, I'm the sort of head of research here at Jagex, I do a lot of work um, with the old school and the RS3 teams but we're here primarily talking about old school. Um, some of you might be aware that uh, over the last few months we've been doing uh, some projects looking at doing some focus groups which we've run for old school in Leeds, uh, London and New York uh, as well as other things that we do as a company which we begin to explore, which is playtesting, um, which isn't Q and A, uh, QA, but actually playtesting potentially new uh, and unannounced um, projects, um, as well as surveys uh, yeah. as well and regular sort of surveys that we do. Um, so what I want to do is actually we're, we're talking today um, because. Uh, we've already launched a big um, consultation to find out with the new skill what are people's actually attitudes towards warding as the new skill um, and uh, so a number of you would have received uh, an inbox message, an in-game message uh, as well as an email link um, asking to take part and uh, give your feedback um, now, it was so successful and there was so much conversation going on on Twitter as well. Uh, we're actually doing a large sort of uh, invite for another big group of uh, players to give their feedback as well um, about warding. Um, so uh, the emails will be going out now. Uh, have a sort of look in the next couple of minutes. It might take an hour or two for all emails to be sent out. If you haven't got something but an inbox message in your uh, in your um, in-game message center, then uh, check your junk mail. It always goes in there. And what we're trying to do is we're just trying to understand actually what are you concerned about with warding? What do you think is great? What we should improve and change? Um, just to get a sense from you as players, actually what do you want from warding? Or what you might be concerned about. And what we'll do following that, that's gonna close in the next couple of days. So be quick with your feedback. Uh, I'm then going to go in a darkened room somewhere and run my magic. Um, <laughs> well, that sounds very curious. <laughs> it's all very scientific, we assume. Yeah, oh, very scientific. <laughs> it is. Um, uh, and what we're going to do is uh, sort of get a sense of actually, you know, what do different groups, what do different old school players actually want um, out of this? Which is why we're doing um, a random sort of sample of people. So. You know, not just what do the new players think, but what do old play older players, what do uh, Iron Men's think, everything. So we can kind of get a sense of every kind of key group, um, what you actually want from warding. So yeah, it's a fairly scientific process. I have a background in, in, in that from a, a research perspective. And we just want to do things, you know, better and understand what the yep. concerns sure. are, I guess. Yeah. And we all know warding is like one of the, we know it's controversial. We know it's got yeah. obviously very strong opinions on both sides. It's one of, the, one of the biggest topics we've ever approached to try and pull, and it will make a massive difference when it comes to actually, when it comes to our strategy and designing the content, making sure it hits the needs and wants of the player base. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think I think it's the seriousness of something as big as potentially adding a new skill that that demands we have as much data as possible, um, like we say, to, to be sort of informed <clears throat> and make the right decisions. Um, something players have asked me about, yeah. and I'm sure you've seen this as well, is 
how how we select the samples for who yeah. gets asked. Yeah. Um, so there, are, for example, lots of players saying things like, "Oh, I'm I'm in the high level community. I'm, su I'm surprised my opinion hasn't been directly asked." Yeah. Okay. I mean, so there's a couple of things in that. Um, the first one is we obviously care an awful lot about what everyone thinks, and so we have uh, previously been uh, asking on Reddit and doing other Q and As, um, and on Twitter, you know, obviously hitting up all the different mods, just giving your initial feedback and thoughts. Um, the reason why um, what we've done here is um, it's, you know, it takes a long time to read through every comment and if we, you know, message everyone to give their feedback, you might be looking at a million, a million and a half people actually giving all their feedback and I wish I could read everything, but I can't. Um, but what we're doing is um, it's, it's a random sample from all the different, as I say, key uh, sort of areas across the membership. So, as I say, those who've joined maybe fairly recently through to those who've joined, you know, way back uh, in 2013, um, alongside all the other things. So we can get a sense of what the conversations are actually taking place, sure. what the concerns are for like an Iron Man, what the concerns are for a very high skilled player. Um, so we can kind of get a sense of what we should be looking at. And we can then investigate that in much more detail. We can do, obviously, follow-ups as well yep. with key groups to find out more. Um, if you haven't been invited, either in this round or the last round, I would suggest you still kind of keep that conversation going, though, on the Reddit, um, subreddit forums, um, talking to you know all the mods here or elsewhere on Twitter or any, any other form of social media. Because we want to explore this. We want to create something that if we do want to push it to the poll, that it's actually going to be great. And we have, at the moment, just a dev blog kind of outlining yep. the bare bones of it. And so a lot of this is actually going to help inform what warding will eventually be. Yeah. All it is right now is a concept. They yeah, can be sure. compl it can yeah. completely be shape-shifted into exactly what you want it to be. Yeah, I mean, that was that was the point from the beginning, which was give you guys the the foundation, the idea that we've got, and then let you build it with us. Help us, help us with the design, what you think should be in it. Yeah. Um, it, it. It's in the player's hands as is, well, everything old school so and if, if people actually genuinely are interested in my sampling method i am very happy to spend some time on twitter uh telling you what a random stratified sample actually looks like um didn't realize that after uni i'd be explaining that to to gamers but it's, it's great <laughs> hey, it's um, just a nerd out. Uh, yeah no it's, it's perfect um but it's it's you know it's trying to be a bit more scientific and trying to be a bit better about actually what, what different player groups want rather than something that comes as a, as a total surprise. And not just the loudest people who shout always get heard, it's, it's trying to uh, open that up a little bit more, really. Yeah. So yeah, um, if, if you are interested, you can find me on, on Twitter on uh, Jagex Searcher. So um, okay. very happy to yeah, talk about that. There's the free that. plug, it's uh, at Jagex Searcher uh, for any questions about surveys <laughs> and uh, things of that nature, how we're collecting data and uh, researching these, uh, these things. Okay. Um, well, I'm going to thank you for your time. That's cool. Uh, I do. It, yeah, interestingly to... enough, there are a couple of other things I did want to mention very briefly um, before I, so I don't take over the whole show. <laughs> um, there is something else that we are looking at doing. Um, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to make an announcement um, and send out an inbox to um, old school RuneScape players who are based around California. We actually have a very small project that we're doing um, that we are going to be asking um, old school players for their help. Uh, I will make an announcement. I will do the same as what we've done previously. We'll send an inbox message and an email inviting people to take part and if they want to express interest in being involved in this. Uh, I can't say anything else at the moment, but one of the things that we're trying to do is just introduce um, a more kind of outwardly looking um, research process as well as other things that we're doing. Um, I come from a very heavily research orientated background and part of that is actually communicating um, a lot better about what we do. Uh, so I'm very keen to be talking about that. Um, also, if I have the time, uh, later on in uh, sort of the next month or two, there's going to be a large uh, survey taking place as well, much more about your overall experience of playing um, yep. old school and finding out much more about um, what you would like to sort of see, what you experience with old school, with Jagex, and what support you, you actually need. Um, and then finally, um, I know a lot of people are actually asking about that big survey that we did um, at the end of last year. Yes. Um, what I'd really like to do in my, my role is, is start telling people a lot more about um, uh, uh, the data that we've got. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, 
or month or two, we'll get more information back to the players to present about what's going on. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, I remember after we did the big survey, a lot of players were asking, what can we see you know, resulted from that and how is that going to inform our changes? Um, yeah. So that's something we'll make sure to include you guys on. Uh, well, if that was everything. Yeah, then, um, that's it. Yeah, now, now that's for it. Filling us in. That's cool. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Cool. Cool. So the only other announcements for the time being, uh, we have Qual Month coming up, obviously. Uh, we're putting together the Qual suggestions at the minute. Uh, we've been looking at the backlog. We've been looking at your suggestions, putting them together. It's going to take the format of four separate weeks, I believe, in the order of combat, skilling, rerun, which is to poll things that didn't quite make it before but need to be brought up again just to see if you guys feel differently now. And the final one, oh, blimey, what was it? Can someone help me other. out? Other. Other, yeah, Miss. just other, other changes, just general, <laughs> general qual. Um, so we'll be asking for your guys' opinions and help on what you want in game qual wise over the next four weeks and we'll be rolling them out in separate separate polls. Uh, <laughs> Did you say a <laughs> <laughs> um, So I think that's it in terms of announcements. Uh, I guess we'll move on to the questions. So we've got <laughs> we've got a whole bunch. Uh, that's Mod Maz joining us on the chat. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so our first bunch of questions are regarding Song of the Elves, um, the big elf quest written by Mod Ed, which is coming up. Um, unfortunately, you couldn't join us on the couch this week, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer these questions for you. Um, the first one being from Stormcrown, who asks if we could get Crystal Secateurs as an upgrade from the Magic Secateurs instead of another herb patch. And I think I've seen this quite a bit. Um, I think as far as Ed and I were discussing earlier, it's something that we'd prefer to see come from more directly farming related content, say if we were to introduce uh, Fairy Tale Part 3 in the future. I think that would be a more fitting place than Song of the Elves for Crystal Secateurs, or for upgraded Secateurs. Mm. That's fair. On the topic of Secateurs, I'd like to make them work from your inventory. Oh, this again. No <laughs> that old chestnut. Um, mm. I, think I've, I think I've made my feelings about that clear before. <laughs> Um, that's fair enough. I mean, if, if we did get an item like that, how much more yield are we, are we talking? What do you think is reasonable? Like an extra 5%, something like that, maybe? Um, yeah, no, okay. <laughs> I don't know. We would really be helping farming uh, well, herbs a lot. Yeah. Especially We've added the new yields. Yeah. Anima patch things as well. Like, yeah, that as well. I don't know if we need to add it much further. Mm. Um, and on a similar vein of the same reason that it's fed into the community feedback for not doing another herb patch is like yeah. firstly there's a lot to go around uh, and secondly obviously it generates more herbs mm. i don't want to spoil anything right now but there have been suggestions for different types of patches that could replace the herb patch if that's something you really guys aren't interested in having um there have been some cool suggestions keep an eye out we like some of them and may may work on them um stone j uh, says that there's an agility icon on the proposed PRIF map. Uh, is this a new agility course is, is the question. Um, also, black, black graceful is, is the question. Uh, <laughs> to address it in two parts, black graceful, no, not from Prifinus. It's just not something that fits Prifinus. Would rather have it come from a bit, something a bit more fitting. Say if it was, for example, an agility course in Maya Ditch would be a bit more of a fitting location to unlock it. Um, the map itself with the agility icon, so that was uh, drawn up sort of before RuneFest, before all of the design had gone into Prifinus, so it hadn't been sort of fully decided. Uh, basically, just keep in mind there's a second poll going to be coming at some point in the future, which will have a lot more content, and that may well be one of the things on it, but it's not something that we're working on just yet, or something that's included in the current poll. Okay, there we go. Um... I think it was Mod Rai who snuck the Black Graceful question in again <laughs> to uh, these questions. I need, I need that <coughs> button that we, ha we had a few weeks ago just for... <laughs> da -da 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 -da. It's, it's the hundredth time we've been asked about Black Graceful. <laughs> uh, Mozzie Z says, This quest would be a great opportunity to take out Nightmare Zone's crystal stat degradation perk and put it somewhere more meaningful. A rare reward from the Gauntlet could be an example uh, for a specific kind of crystal that could be used on the crystal weaponry or shield to prevent them losing their stats when they degrade. Um, how do we feel? Well, I think this would be nice. It would also lock it behind a very high level quest, whereas now is not much of a requirement. So 
I like it, but it's a pretty big, quite a pretty big requirement on all that sort of stuff right now, which is mm. readily readily available for everyone. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I, I'm of the opinion Nightmare Zone's already strong. We all know that. Mm. So any opportunity to move some of the rewards away from the shop and to somewhere more fitting um, is something we should take advantage of. Uh, I don't mind them being locked behind the quest, to be fair. I think that's, that's fair. It's going to be all about crystal equipment, armor, and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, thematically, it's definitely a sort of fitting location to put that reward. And um, it's something that, if the community were really interested in, that we could definitely look to offer in Pole 2. Cool. So moving on. Ah, I don't know if we're going to be able to show an image or not. I didn't warn our producer in time. <laughs> I don't think he's listening to me either. Um, producer! <laughs> <laughs> he's just woken up. Um, are you able to access the dock I'm looking at? <coughs> you can't. No. Nah. Okay. Um, Mass can. Ah, so the question from the <laughs> Scuffed. In fairness, I was like reading the internal office chat. That's fine, no, that's, like, this right. is on me. Um, so, the crystal quiver suggestion uh, is something that's come up. Um, if we could put that up, that'd be cool. Oh, so oh, oh, this is risky. The, uh, hopefully it'll come up for you guys in a sec. The idea, the idea behind this is an item that you can equip in your ammo slot, um, and it will buff the crystal, crystal bow. Um, and if you want to, we could you know, stick this in the, in the poll. Um, if you guys think it's good. Uh, yeah, seeing lots of yeses in the chat. What do we think about an item like this, guys? Just having a read of the stats it gives. Um, it seems a reasonable thing to do, like Crystal Bow, could, we could easily have a more powerful version. As for the stats, I don't know if we're actually like, comparing it to yeah. alternatives. Sure. I can't imagine it's going to come close to Blue Pipe and Tebow, but... Mm. No, it'd certainly be nice to make the Crystal Bow more viable. Um, mm. Yeah. And something along these lines could be a nice way to do it, seeing lots of positivity in the chat, so... I think the sort of bottom point on the image there is a pretty important one that you wouldn't be able to protect it as well as the crystal bow if you were scold in PvP because mm -hmm. people know that a lot of people like to sort of go into the wilderness or into PvP worlds with just a crystal bow and maybe black dragon hide. Yeah. And we don't want it to be adding another item to that that they can protect. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and that gives it a nice anchor as well in terms of its value. Um, so, yeah, we, we like the suggestion. Might include. <laughs> Uh, Goose says that having the teleport crystal, three different crystal seeds, and crystal shards seems a bit convoluted. Um, this person, well, they have a bunch of crystal seeds in their bank doing nothing because they already have all the crystal equipment. Is there a solution for simplifying the concept and actually giving the crystal seeds? Uh, we currently have more uses. Um, so with the things that those new proposed seeds, the equipment seeds, the armor seeds, everything like that are uh, intended for, we do really need sort of the different types of seed. There needs to be that difference in them. And so we couldn't have the existing crystal seeds fill that gap. But personally, and I know Ed is as well, I'm open to any other uses we could find for the existing crystal seeds. Mm. Um, I think one example that we saw suggestions of would be a crystal tree. I mean, they sort of exist in law and it seems like a fitting use for them. Yeah. Um well, I said I wouldn't spoil it, but I suppose I'll go into it now because um, it's relevant. But yeah, the crystal crystal tree was one of the suggestions uh, to put in Prif rather than the herb patch, which we saw. Um, and it makes sense to plant a crystal seed, get a crystal tree, um, which you could then chop to get the shards, which I think are what you use to fuel the, the equipment. Um, yep. it, it all m makes sense thematically. That's a sick idea. I think it's cool. I think it's really cool. Um, it's a shame we don't have an image. It's somewhere on Reddit. Um, <laughs> But uh, it, it looks really good, um, and I think it, it just fits really smoothly. So from Reswob, uh, they say, you just discussed on a recent Q&A how dehyde is an issue with its defensive bonuses and zero negatives. Uh, why does the crystal armor have prayer bonuses and zero negative bonuses? Um, I've got a note here from Mod Ed, uh, who wasn't able to make it, but took a quick look and answered some of these questions. Um, his stance is that the problem with dehyde is how easy it is to get, um, and that Crystal Arm is a different case because it's going to be quest locked, um, not only behind all of the, well, we're talking underground paths, we're talking Morning Zen Part 2, and then the requirements, which are going to be reasonably high for Song of the Elves. Um, 
and it's also going to degrade. So we feel like it's far more reasonable in this instance. Um, there's still room for, for balancing and changing things. Uh, room for balancing things and changing things, you know, based on your guys' feedback. Um, I mean, does that seem reasonable to you guys? Yeah, I mean, there is like a far higher sort of barrier for entry for this armor than there is for Dragonhide. Like, it's not just that, um, although I believe, I'm not entirely sure off the top of my head, but I believe the seeds themselves that would be used to make the armor will be tradable, but to actually get the armor, you'll need to be able to create it yourself, which will require Song of the Elves, among other things. So, I mean, like, yeah, it's a lot more difficult to get your hands on than Black Dragonhide. Which is a few K on the GA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think the accessibility makes it makes it different in this case, and we think more more justified. Uh, I'm just clarifying with Mod Maz, who's on the chat. Um, so I don't think it's necessarily quite the same. Um, but one of the qual questions uh, that came up, um, which we're going to put in the poll, is. Blessed Dehyde. Um, it currently has a defense requirement, um, unlike the other um, Dehyde chaps parts. Um, so we're going to poll removing that, I think. Um, it doesn't seem reasonable to have such a high requirement on those, just for, I think it's what, a plus one prayer bonus. Um, but yeah, that's Dehyde for you. Lots of no's in chat, but uh, well, we'll see what uh, the wider community think for the time being. Um, Validify. Thoughts on making the gauntlet scale for groups one to four? Uh, sounds like some great content and reminds me of a PVM stealing creation. My favorite part of stealing creation was always playing with friends. Uh, I'd love to recapture some of that nostalgia with this new content. The group aspect of Dungeoneering was similarly my favorite part. Um, so how do we feel about <coughs> possibly making the gauntlet more of a group activity or even just having a group option? So as I see it, I mean, within the past couple of years, we've had two batches of raids come out. We've had the Theatre of Blood and the Chambers of Zarek, which are both sort of uh, big group challenges like that. Whereas the only solo challenge, sort of beyond just a boss on its own, that we've had in a long time is the Inferno. And um, I think we want this to fill that kind of gap of being a challenge that's more than a boss for solo players, but not quite at the same height as the Inferno. Hmm. Yeah, that's reasonable to me. Um, in, in Mod Ed's notes, he's, he's written that the gauntlet was originally pitched and designed as a solo play experience. Um, but if there is enough demand to, to offer a group, a group version um, or a group way to, to play the content, then we're open to that. Um, we just want to, to be clear which elements of group play um, you guys are keen on, uh, if, if it turns out most of you are. But, um, I mean, do we think do we think there's a good balance at the moment of group group content to single play content? Obviously, we have raids being the, the example at the minute, but they're quite well. We've got high requirements. Um, in all honesty, I don't I don't really know. I think there's gaps on both sides. Like, mm. while we've done a lot of group content, it's been raids focused. I would like to offer at some stage. I don't know when, but like, I think there's a big gap for a standard boss. That's group based, a grinding boss that you can just go and kill, mm -hmm. much that you can corp or God War style. Yep. Um, for groups, we don't have anything like that. Corp is, corp's all right, but it doesn't offer the same level of different interesting mechanics like that the bosses in raids do. Mm -hmm. um, Solo is fairly good on Slayer bosses, etc. but outside yep. of that, again, it's quite limited. Cool. So there's definitely scope for, for more group things. Yeah. Um, this may or may not be the place, just depending on how the design shapes. Uh, Rick Doe wants to know the, uh, the estimated XP rates for the new skilling boss. Um, the long and short of this is... Uh, have we released the name? We have released the name. It's Zolcano, is, is the new mining skilling boss uh, that we'd like to include with Song of the Elves in Prif. Um, it's not designed to be, this is my understanding, it's not, it's not designed to be a source of experience. It's not going to be a place to train mining, runecraft, uh, runecrafting and smithing. There'll be trace amounts of XP, but very small. Um, the whole point is resources and unique rewards. Um, yeah, so it's kind of, you, you need to think of it more as a boss than a training method. So in the same way that you don't go to say Zolra or General Grador to train your combat stats, you won't be going here to specifically train your stats. You'll be going here to treat it as a boss. Cool. Um, 
and yeah, I think we're, we're pretty firm on that. We don't want it to be, like we say, a training method. Um, it's going to be resource based, so don't expect it to be the new meta for training room crafting um, or either of the other skills. Uh, and the last question regarding Song of the Elves is from Rich, who asks for details of, well, is asking for the details of the generous new drop table coming with the gauntlet. Um, well, the main thing coming from that is going to be the crystal armor, right? Uh, that's going to be the source of it. Um, and Ed has noted that it's not likely that we'll reward other mid-high content um, due to the fact that you're not actually risking items when you when you go there. Um, it's not strictly a safe safe zone, I think, but... Um, no, if you die in the gauntlet, it is a dangerous death. Yep. Right. So, uh, so there we go. It's crystal armor that you'll be getting from that. Uh, bit of content in, in particular. Um, moving on to more general questions now then. Um, Steng wants a new sound for the special attack of Dragon Claws um, because it currently uses the DDS sound. <coughs> uh, what kind of sound? What should it? It's like a swoosh swoosh. A swoosh swoosh. That's best. It's like whoosh whoosh. Uh, that's that's ah. the best impression I can do. <laughs> we get the um, models here for you to do it again. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sure. Over there. We should, someone should demonstrate and make the sound. <laughs> <laughs> what? Where's the DDS? I haven't got a DDS. We've got a pair of claws. <laughs> Had a DDS. We're too far away. The mics aren't wireless. <laughs> it would be a lot of effort to go over there and get the claws. Oh, okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a suitable suggestion. Yeah? It does have the same sound because I checked before coming down. I was like, really? Oh, it does. So, I'm pretty sure it was back in the day. Back when they were first added, in a way. I can't remember. Regardless, I'm sure the audio team would happily create a custom sound yeah. for it. Okay. Right, well, yes, we'd like to do that. Uh, Mist uh, is asking if a slight nerf to the blowpipe is ever going to be considered. I think we answered this not only on last week's stream, but several times. Um, it, we would have to run it by the whole community, basically, is the long and short of it. Um, a lot of people, well, myself included, think it is too powerful, especially for the cost. But it's, the question is how you go about nerfing it. Um, I think a, a decrease in the attack speed would be too much. Um, I'm thinking maybe reduce the, the accuracy, something along those lines. Mm -hmm. um, how do, are, we, are we in agreement that it deserves a tiny nerf mm -hmm. of some kind, or? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. So, yes, we'll consider it, I guess. It's something we're always thinking about. I mean, not, not just blowpipe, but I mean, as a whole, obviously, integrity of the game is important. We need to consider what is harming it. Um, and long term, that's actually blocking us from making content properly mm. because we always have to cater to these problems of certain items that are way too powerful. But that's not to say we're going to nerf it next week. We will. I'd chat with you guys if we were to approach something like that. Yeah, yeah, because obviously it would change. Well, just so much it's become such an embedded item at this point. Uh, yeah, it's right. been. It's, Zola came out start of 2015. We're now four years since it came out, and it's been this powerful. That's a long time. So it's not something we're just going to approach lightly. We would work with you guys. We know so many of you would prefer to just keep their blowpipe and use it because it's powerful. Um, but. So it's difficult, and also I don't really know what the best solution is for nerfing it, even if we were to. Mm. Okay, so that's that's our answer <coughs> for, the, uh, for the time being on the on the blowpipe debate. Um, Scully says that when you're slashing webs, um, I think not just in the wilderness but generally, uh, you have to equip a weapon to slash them or have a knife in your inventory. Um, can we do it with well slashing weapons? Can they work from the inventory for? Cutting webs is the question. Yeah, because you either equip something or use it on the web. Yeah. That would be nice. Um, um, it's already know. got a slash option. Yeah, I don't see any problem with this. Um, just maybe include it in Qual, even. Yeah. Unless we see any, well, can think of any issues. I don't think so. Cool, probably happy to do that then. Um, the same player has asked if we can make fish chunks from aerial fishing uh, available for use to feed to cats and kittens. Um, sure, why not? I guess. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> it's not something that I feel strongly about no, either way. It's because it's, it's stackable, right? It's not stackable food you can it get is. already. Yeah. Yeah. I believe you can use Karamwanji. Yes, you can. 
the, oh, those yeah. Iron Men who donate cats for death wounds. Yeah. At it again. Yeah. I have no strong feelings one way or the other. Um, we need it, well, honestly, right, just before you move on. You, Mud Bruno mentioned the, uh, the fact you can grow cats and then kill them. <laughs> oh, is, Donate is that, them. Why well, don't we expand this feature to include boss pets? <laughs> Jeez. So, how, how, many, how many death wounds are offered for? Uh, 200 for a, for a cat, I think. 200 for a cat? 2k for a boss how pet? Many, how many death wounds are given your boss pet that you'd. I, I don't know. <laughs> your cute little Jad pet. It's worth 20k death runes. 20k death runes. <laughs> At that point, What's still, more important to you? <laughs> I, I still don't think I'll donate the, the part Jad. <laughs> I imagine some people would be like, well, the pet's only cosmetic. 20k death runes, yeah. that's good money, you know? Yeah. If, you, if you're going for like the top level uh, head gear from um, Chompy Birds, that's a lot of pets you'll get, so. Maybe yeah. exclude that one. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe balance it to give like, I don't know, 1k. <laughs> anyway, it's just more of a joke, but... Mm. Right. Uh, where was I? Oh, Legend's Tale asks if we can allow the tall leprechaun to store our <coughs> centers without having to unequip them first. Um, additionally, can the restriction <coughs> of diving underwater with approved weapons already wielded, like the secateurs, be allowed? Two-part question. Um, so right now, when you go down, it tells you you've got to have your hands free because you've got to be, you know, front crawl. Diving. Right. Diving, whatever. Yeah. Um, but then when you're down, I think it's on fossil land because you land straight on ground or are you swimming when you land? It depends on your weight. Okay. Right. So it's weight dependent. You can't wield it. Okay. There might be a solution somewhere if you're heavy enough that you're going to land. We might be able to let you just keep the item on in the first place. Mm. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I think we're open to it. Um, so not depositing whilst you're wearing it. I mean, it's not that much effort to just do one more click. No. It also doesn't really fit with anything else. We can save some precious ticks here, though. Mm. Precious, precious ticks. Or not equip it whilst you're running to the tool. Right. <laughs> uh, MacDadio22 says, Can we change the US flags in the world selection screens to make the east and west coast distinguishable? It would be a nice way for anyone on either side of the country to know which world is better. Um, that would be a nice change. I missed all of that because I was too busy fixing the mic. <laughs> US flags on the World Select screen. Um, um, we make them East and West Coast specific. I don't think it's something that we have control over from the game side, is it? Is I'm, I don't know what information we get about those worlds in game. Do we know that they're... Just the US, is that all we know? I believe there's a sort of ongoing job that the engine team are going to be undertaking over the course of some undefined time, which will allow us more control over these sorts of things. But right now, it's not something that we as a team have control over. The world switch on the login screen, we can't do anything about. The world switch on game, perhaps we can do more with? Mm. Okay. So potentially, it just requires a bit of work and looking into. Um, Reach for the Sky asks if it's possible to toggle which login screen to use. Um, I've seen actually the suggestion, I might have been the same player or not. Um, obviously we've had quite a few different login screens now, um, all of them look amazing. So I think, I think the feeling is that it's a shame to, to retire them only to never be seen again. Um, so maybe giving our players the option to, well, to toggle through them and choose which, which ones they, they want to see. When we get, so our login screen currently, much similar to the last question, the login screen and world select feature are currently hard coded inside the engine, which means it's a lot of work to go and add these features. However, at some point, they are going to be de hard coding it, right. which will allow us to completely customize it, make tweaks and fixes to it a lot more quickly. Um, but that will include rewriting that world switcher so that we can make it look a a look, look a lot nicer, give you more information without having to hover over the worlds first, set favourite worlds, all of these features as well, and customise the login picture if you so wish. Um, these are the sort of things we can approach. Awesome. Cool. Um, I have to say, I really like the latest one uh, from the Kebos comp. I think it looks amazing. It might even be my favourite with the uh, Mount Karoom in the background and the blue, the blue lava. Looks sick. Uh, so, Corpse Slayer asks if on mobile the chat box can be flipped upside down 
this would get the tap the chat line at the top of the screen instead of near the middle. So this is actually something that myself and ModEd looked at back when we were working on mobile coming up to uh, the full commercial launch of it. And um, there's kind of two sides to it. The first being quite simply that it's not as straightforward as people might expect to just mirror it. And it, it, it's, there's a lot more work behind it than that. Um, it is something that we experimented with, but yeah, no, it's not going to be a quick thing. Uh, the second thing being that it would just be very confusing from a user perspective in certain cases. Um, aside from just the fact that you'll be reading in the opposite direction, there's sort of messages in game that get sent in two parts and they'd be coming out the wrong way, I suppose, or mm. like compared to if you've got two separate messages or one message split between two lines, they'd behave differently and it would just be very confusing. Mm. Oh God, if the message was the other way around, <laughs> and a two-line message you'd have to read upwards. Yeah. That would be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. I think, I suppose that's one of the tricky things with mobile is some players want some very specific, or something very specific in the way it looks, I guess. Um, but then sort of user <coughs> accessibility and friendliness is something we have to consider for, for so everyone. Just, I think they want the chat to stay in the same direction, but move the click to type to where you put your message into the top. Yeah. yeah. Because it is a point that it is easy to click, misclick it mm. when you're running on things. And all of a sudden you're typing and the, yeah. the keyboard pops up and you're like, ah! <laughs> um, so maybe that's more approachable than re reordering which way the chat goes, right? Yeah. That'd be a lot more reasonable. Cool. Uh, Dr. Stormzin uh, wants to be allowed to use transformations such as the monkey gree grees or penguin suit. Uh, well, everywhere. Um, perhaps as a perk of the quest cape. The magic of the Grigri only works in very specific areas. The magic of the penguin suit only works near Larry, I'm afraid. Law reasons, so you can't. How do you explain the port phasmatic <laughs> ghost sheet? It's too spooky. It's too spooky. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you wore that in Varrock, the citizens wouldn't be there very long. <laughs> yeah. So it's all fine when you just walking around with ghosts but when you walk into like a civilized area people will freak out yeah yeah just cause in all seriousness <laughs> it's because we would have to have a whole suite of animations to them if they use them mm. anywhere yeah. um you already know like when people go and chop teaks on the avatar you can be a monkey yeah and mm. you don't see any anim it just sits there in front of the train you get logs <laughs> there's no there's no axe action yeah. so that's why you can't just let them go anywhere and it's the same for the like the ghost suit, right? There's no arms in it. There's no there's no armholes. You're not like woo. Uh, so there's no animations. You just walk around. And uh, so if you go to an area where you can do combat, it's it's not going to really work very well. That's the problem with it. And trust me, I would bloody love to have that ghost outfit everywhere because it's sick. But I don't think we can really do it. Right. Yeah. So that is. I think we've answered this before. The the stance is we we, we would love this stuff, but. Um, no, just technically, for animation reasons, uh, probably not going to happen. Um, Azen from somewhere says that uh, crystal shields have been used a lot lately, especially in PvP situations, uh, as cheap, um, well, a cheap option for a shield that has really good stats, but when you lose it, you get the crystal seed, which costs a low amount. Um, can we have a... Sorry, just wording. Um, can we have a change to this instead of... Sorry, it's, it's almost illegible. Um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't you write the questions? I, I didn't, actually. I didn't put them together myself this week. Um, I just want, I'm trying to figure out what they want exactly. I think they're asking to make the Crystal Seed cost more like 60k um, than whatever it currently costs. Just make it more expensive so that the Crystal Shield's not such a cheap option uh, for how good it is. How much does it go down to? Because I know obviously it starts at 750k. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the cheapest price it is? Uh, no. But I think the part of the question is where people PK in. You kill someone with a crystal shield, the drop. And so the cheapest is 150k. <clears throat> yeah, that's right, yeah. So I'm not sure what the question is. Well, <laughs> if you, I mean, have a go. Try and. Okay, okay. <laughs> Which one is it? Yeah, can the. Okay. Maybe it's probably me. I'm going to read it out again, right? Okay, Just, it's probably okay. me. <laughs> Crystal shields have been used a lot lately, especially in PvP situations, as a cheap and best shield for its stats. But when people lose it, you get a Crystal Seed which costs low. 
Can we have a change to this? Instead of the Crystal Seed, maybe like 60k GP. This gets rid of the Crystal Seed and brings it. But if it's 150k... That's right. But you can't just buy the seed, right? I think their problem is, if you kill someone, you get a seed which is worthless, but they... Oh, that's a good point. Oh, okay. See, that makes more yeah. sense. Right. Yeah. Wordings. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh yes, you get that crystal. One. That's not on me. <laughs> but when people lose it, you get crystal. That makes sense. When you kill someone and yeah, they yeah. drop it, you only get a five kissy. Bruno, what a man. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can go down the route of doing <clears throat> a broken one, <clears throat> perhaps. Similarly to what we did for a lot of other PvP items. So you kill someone with the untradeable item like the, the Dragon Defender, you get a broken Dragon Defender. Um, it gives you coins, and then so they have to go and repair it for a fee that's actually more expensive. Um, so we don't inflate with gold, but we allow you to have a better reward. Um, I can see one issue with this is though, you get your shield to like 100 charges, you die, and you get your like, I don't know, 100k or whatever we'd offer for a shield, which would, would be worth like 5k. Mm. So. Okay, I'll we'll have to look into it. Yeah. Okay, we'll examine that one. <coughs> um, Den Ferok says... To be fair, it doesn't have stats when it's one, does it? It's rubbish. Uh, it goes down slowly. If it's imbued, it keeps its stats. Oh, okay. But yeah, if you get down to like 10 charges, if you use those 10 charges, it comes back to a seed, which is worthless. Right. But at that point, mm. it is worthless. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but if you kill someone with like a shield with mm. 10 charges, you get the full cash. Unless we make it scale. Ah, oh, there's no good solution for this. Yeah, there isn't. Anyway, we'll figure something out because it's a problem. A time to, yeah. to work out. We'll investigate. Cool. Um, so our next player says the loot broadcast in the chambers of Zeric uh, should be changed to a bright purple. Uh, sorry, a bright purple light shines for, and then the player name. Uh, then the broad, sorry, then broadcast the loot once they actually open it. I love the tension and excitement of getting a drop in the theatre of blood without knowing what it is. What if they log out? Then. There's ambiguity of, what did he get? Did he get a twisted bow? Did he get, mm. I don't know, an arcane scroll? Because they're very different items. That's a good point. How do we solve it in Theory of Blood? It's a purple chest. So you'll see that they've got one, but we'll see that they've got one similarly mm. because of the chat message. Mm. And then when they open it, it shows, I think. Mm. But in th So in Theory of Blood, you can tell because the chest if they don't the yeah. mm. if they're not if you you everyone else will stay in the raid mm -hmm. until that other person opens the chest yeah. and then you'll be told yeah. and if they don't open then if they don't they open it they've probably got something to hide no they don't get the loot if they don't open it so that'd be the yeah, they'll have to open it yeah. yeah but if they wait for you guys to all leave <laughs> the raid then they're probably up to no good yeah mm. I, I suppose the idea would be that the player who received it also wouldn't know what they've got until they open it you don't get top loot if you leave. That's a good point. Yeah. Mm. Whereas if you leave the, uh, the chambers, you still get a loot in your yeah. box. In your yeah. box. You'd have to force it that way. Otherwise, I can just mm. imagine like, yeah. oh, no, I just got a bunch of mithril guys. You guys go on out. I'm going to... How? <laughs> I've got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> How much do people use swear. the feature that they get their loot afterwards? Mm. Mm. If they leave. I like it the way it is now, but I do understand why people like it for that like surprise yeah, factor. For sure. Because yeah. people, what people do now, if, if they're in a group, they hide the chat and hope for the best. It's a good point. If you DC, that's the way to get your loot. So yep. I think we should leave it. But I do agree. We should try and come up with systems that don't just spoil it in your chat straight away. Yeah, for sure. All right, then. Uh, Hugo says, can you streamline the dialogue when handing in a farming contract? Currently, there's a back and forth. I propose something like, do you want another contract? Yes, I want an easy, medium or hard or no, I don't want a contract. Um, I'd I, like this, yeah. yeah. Seems reasonable to me. Okay. Because usually when you finish a contract, there's no reason to not get another one. Mm. So. Yep, yep, sounds reasonable. Um, if we can streamline that, I don't see why not. Uh, Mick says, replace the Warriors Guild to teleport with the Farming Guild one on the Max Cape, please. Uh, is that inconvenient, Bruno? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I have no idea. Uh, yeah, you definitely use the farming guild quite often. I've noticed, even if it is just now because it's been released recently. Okay. So yeah, I'd be down for that. 
cool. The activity of the farming guild's been wild since launch, and it, yeah. it hasn't really yeah. dropped that much. <clears throat> I don't think I've ever teleported to the Warriors Guild, aside from when someone maxes, so you beat them to it. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it's still going to be pretty quick. Mm, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, so this is quite an interesting question. I'm glad it's in here. I saw it earlier. Um, so I'm glad it was put in. I think Mod Rye put the questions together for me kindly this week. Um, Mod Rye to blame for that one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's from Lord Goza. I think that's how I'm going to... That's what I'm going with, anyway. Um, and they ask, what is your philosophy behind designing new drop tables? Where does it start? What considerations do you try to take? And how do you balance it? Um, it's also, well, it's sort of a two-part of the next, the next bit says, what determines which common drops you choose to add? Um, how data-driven is this? Do you look at the GE prices and the, how many items are in the, in the game at the moment? Um, basically just want to know the whole process for designing a drop table. Um, just before I get into this, they keep hearing Windows noises every now and then, apparently. Hmm. They're freaking out about a Windows noise that happened. I'm my headphones. That's weird. <laughs> oh. Is it the shutdown one from, like, XP, <laughs> when I try and read out a question? No. <laughs> Unless this is some massive elaborate troll. It's not coming through. No, it can't be a troll. There's too many people in sync yeah. going, oh my god, Windows! <laughs> <laughs> For it to be, to be, to be fake. Yeah. yeah, we've got confirmation from my user. Oh, yeah. It's 100% happening. Yeah, but who says our user's trustworthy? If he isn't, the, uh, we will mod him. Calling the stream out of, uh, out of spite. <laughs> no, we have, uh, we're on very good terms with our user. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, question, mm. yeah. so there's a few factors. It depends on what the boss, or let's say it's a boss, for example, but what its place is, what other benefits do you have for killing it? How restricted is the boss as well? If it's really good XP and it's offering that as a reward, you don't really need a strong drop table. Mm. If it's very restricted, um, slayer task only, very high level requirements to get to, that's probably going to make you a bit stronger. Um, then, the drop table itself. To me, the ideal drop table is one that just covers your supplies, a bit of profit, yep. and then the uniques that really drive home the big profit. Mm. God Wars so, is really good for that. God Wars is a perfect Probably example so. of that. Yep. Cerberus is pretty good <clears> too. Yep. Now, a lot of people shouted about that with a lot of the new drop tables we've done recently as well. Um, Vorkaf got a lot of attention, Hydra Boss, or Kodar's drop table maybe. But that's a bit weird. It's a bit of a different kind of drop table anyway. But you cannot really do that unless you've got very strong uniques. And so the Hydra is actually pretty good because it's got the, the, the claw that's 80 mil. But in comparison to God Wars Dungeon, which, you know, especially Grado and Cree are dropping three pieces of best in stock gear. Yep. Quite commonly as well, by the yep. way which means they are driving at home a lot of the profit. Cerberus has the boots. Again, the boots as a whole are quite common. Mm. We haven't got the ability <laughs> to just add best in slot items to every drop table. Yeah. It would be the dream world, um, but we just need more it's hard. Slots. So it's, the drops are getting fairly niche. Like Dragon Hunter Lance is 80 mil, but it is a niche item. <clears throat> We're lucky it's 80 mil, but to make it that, it has to be quite rare. Yeah. Um, which means it's, it has a limited ability to impact the overall sure. GP per hour. In terms of otherwise, so the kind of items, I think generally we try to approach a sort of theme of certain items, like mm -hmm. we might go down the herb route and seeds route, or you could go down the ores route. And it's nice that it follows some sort of pan, but then you want some variety as well. Mm -hmm. In terms of data-driven, the way we do it is we have a spreadsheet that automatically pulls all of the GE data into it. Yep. And so when you add items into the drop table, it automatically tells you how much it's worth, etc. Um, it shows you the breakdown of how much each item is contributing to the overall value of the drop table. And it even writes the code for us as well to put into the game. Nice. So <laughs> it's pretty useful. but. In terms of looking at item impact, some of them, it's actually quite hard to predict. So we can look into the items in game. We have that, we have that data and we might often do that sometimes after the fact, if we've realized something's had more impact than we expected it to. So I think post release of this update, everyone was talking, a lot of the community were talking about death runes and blood runes yep. and their prices. And so, 
generally sometimes people will spark that and we'll go and have a look into them. Um, and we can see, generally most items are on an upwards trend. There's more and more players in the game, so there's more of these items coming in, so it goes up. Um, and as soon as we saw it, oh, oh dang, Blood Runes and Death Runes have spiked. There's a lot of them coming in. Hmm. Um, so then in this, in this circumstance, we're like, okay, what is the cause of this? Are they coming from Hydra? Or is it because people are spending less? Um, so we did a deeper dive into it and pretty much found out there's not really an issue at all. Um, right. I think for cases like that where we introduce a new drop table, um, a lot of the changes in the price of items is actually players just anticipating the prices yeah. and shorting or <coughs> buying, stocking up in advance, um, which makes it quite difficult to judge, especially right after release or right before. Um, it often takes a bit of time to settle and look at what's actually happening. Um, so, sorry, I did sort of go on a bit and talk about different topics. <laughs> no, about I think it's tables. a very interesting question. But, um, yeah, it's like, so we, like, with that sort of circumstance with Blood Runes and Death Runes, the sort of data we'll look at is all of the Blood Runes and Death Runes that are coming into the game, where do they come from? And then generally try and look at where people are spending them as well. Um, and the, sadly, with an economy in a game like this, mm. it's economy on what people think, because you guys don't have access to the data of how many death runes and blood runes are really coming in and going out. And so sometimes we look at stuff as nothing's changed. And you guys are all like, oh, it's getting spammed into the market. <laughs> and the price is going down and down and down. And it's just like, because you all perceive that it is. Mm. Yeah. Um, or it could be a lot of people are selling them and they were merchanting them. There's so many things that affect the prices. But yeah. Cool. It's, yeah. It's a tricky one. And there's. It's not easy to do drop tables very well. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where balancing is, is such an important part as well. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's fundamentally sort of how we go about it and what we try and aim for. Um, I'll move on. I realise we're running out of time. Actually, we've got about five minutes left. I'm going to, you, going to take some chat questions. Um, the first one being, can Mole get an update so that if you barrage him, he can't dig for X amount of time? Freezing the Mole? Anybody? I don't really feel I want to yeah. change them all, but... <clears throat> yeah. Only if it's it was a like a small amount of time, but even then it's sort of like counterintuitive, so what's the point? Because mm. with a Tebow or Darox, you can just three hit that thing, so... Yeah, okay. Fair enough. I did see something about the mole um, recently. I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently if you hit it with the scythe, obviously it gets the extra hits and that can make it dig yep. more than it yep. should. Mm. Um, that definitely happens because it happens the same thing with Dragon Claws. So if you I think, it, yeah, it takes a chance to dig yeah. whenever you hit it. Right, so that's something we could possibly mm -hmm. change. I don't know if that's something we intended. I don't know. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, use let, bigger hit a weapon, hitting weapons. It encourages you to yeah. use, use slow weapons. Yeah. Nice. Darok isn't very expensive and it does pretty damn well, so. Mm. Okay. Um, so, huh, this is for you specifically, uh, Mod Kieran. Hello. Um, when will Mod Kieran release the mechanics of the Theatre of Blood drops? This is what I ask every week. <laughs> <laughs> um, at some point. <laughs> In the future. There you go. Um, as you probably already know, raids and Theatre of Blood at least, they're more complicated than just, here are the raids. So, It'll take some time to sum it up and actually put it into an infographic format. Mm. But at some point, okay, at some point this year, I'll okay. say that. 2019. Right, that is now. the year. All right. Uh, there are also some questions in the chat about the CC disconnecting thing. Right. Um, firstly, we well, are well aware. We've seen the messages. Um, if you do have information about when it happens, let us know. Are you doing lots of hopping? What, what are you, mm. does, does it just seem to happen randomly? Send in that information. Whenever you're hopping, is it, when you, is it when you're hopping a lot? I think it's when you hop a lot um, mm. is, is what I've seen. It causes this issue. Yeah. Um, we are aware of it. Um, okay, thanks. That's useful. Um, that makes sense. But the people are looking into it, rest assured. Uh, another player wants a teleport to the woodcutting guild on the woodcutting cape. I think we talked about this the other day, just adding skill cape teleports to their respective guilds. Um, I'm cool with it. I think the rest of us were happy with <coughs> that as an idea. And to add to this, can you make it so that when you walk in, the guy doesn't talk to you? 
Yeah. I don't want to be interrupted by that guy. That's fair enough. <laughs> That's all. Uh, do, do, do. Can we get Mystic Robe set packs in the Grand Exchange? <laughs> this is funny because we are, obviously we added the Dusk Mystic recently. And when I was adding it, I was like, I was asking Mod West, can you create me a GE set item? And then I found out, oh wait, Mystics doesn't seem to have them, mm. which is a bit weird. I mean, I don't mind them existing, so. Okay, um, I suppose that's a yes. Uh, try and squeeze in two or three more questions if we can. Um, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this name. Uh, if warding passes, the, uh, <clears throat> if warding passes, will the total level worlds be changed because adding a new skill is essentially a free 50 levels or so to the average player? Um, and therefore technically a nerf to these worlds. I wouldn't think so, because it's still a milestone. It's, like, it's still 500, 750, mm -hmm. 1,000, go on. Maybe increase it to 2, 2 250. That would make sense mm -hmm. to keep it as a high level world. Okay. Any other? I want, I want a 2, 2, two oh, I want a max world. Max world. Yes, please. <laughs> yeah. When we come to add a new skill, because I want to race to the new skill world. Mm. Like, the new skill world. I mean, the max world on launch of a new skill would be like yeah. single player world if you're first on 99, and that's epic. Uh, another player says, can we consider adding additional requirements to uh, vote on certain polls? Um, for example, the Chambers of Zeric poll coming soon. Um, a lot of the players who vote won't actually have done it yet. Um, this is something we've thought about well, are still thinking about um, the nature of polls and categorizing them so that they're relevant to the players uh, who are going to engage with the content or already do. Um, but it's not quite that straightforward in that you have to account for the fact a lot of players are currently training. Say, say you need 90 Slayer to kill whatever, but you're at 89. Does that mean you shouldn't be able to vote um, even though you're training Slayer? Um, so it, it's a bit more nuanced than that, but... Um, we are thinking about targeting polls uh, in more specific ways to make <coughs> them relevant to the players uh, who engage with the content. Um, final question, I appreciate Ron's, uh, well, just about out of time. Um, Crazed says, can we get a left click fill option on sand pits? This would make filling buckets of sand slightly better since you won't need to switch between- Can we just add the bloody oh. sandstorms? <laughs> <laughs> Sandstorm. <laughs> Chat quickly. Do we do we want sandstorm? Yes or no? Do, 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 do. Pending, <laughs> thinking. Like oh, the I reason I like sandstorm is because it's an actual, legit piece of content that helps you with something that is literally mundane right now. Yeah. I mean, we had this discussion. Uh, actually, I think we're thinking of offering um, a way to generate buckets of sand uh, with this with this qual um, month coming up. But the argument is, do we want to do it sort of with a spell or with something else? Um, obviously, the reason there's so much demand for buckets of sand is, is, is Iron Man, um, mostly, not, not exclusively, but um, do we add a spell essentially for this game mode is, is the real question. I don't think um, a lot of the players would be cool with that. But if there are other ways to do it, um, we are exploring the options. I mean, the thing is, um, what else? yes, that's true, right now, you either just wait a while and get 84 a day, yeah. or you go and manually get them. And that 84 is if you've got the Elite Diary, I think it is. So, still mm. pretty high requirements for such a low level sort of thing. Like, it's skillless, basically. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and on, top, on that topic of targeting polls, a nine man only poll is potentially yeah. an option when it comes to very direct Iron Man changes. I think that's a lot fairer than, say, level-restricted polls or PvP-restricted polls, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, something to consider and explore in the future. Um, that about wraps us up. I realise we've gone a little bit over time. Um, thank you to all of the mods who joined me on the couch this week. Uh, remember, it's exclamation mark Razor win, win Razor. Did I get that right? Win Razor. Win Razor, exclamation mark win Razor with an E. Um, for a chance to win a Razer phone in our latest competition. Um, thank you for watching and we'll catch you next week.